So there are few recorded accounts of observations of the visible planets in indigenous knowledge systems. However, what these few accounts um, actually show us is that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples had observed some fundamental differences which distinguish the planets from the background stars in the night sky. Yeah, so the ecliptic, that is the path uh, in which the sun, the moon, the planets follow uh, across the sky was quite often referred to as the path of the sky ancestors. And the occasional retrograde motion of the planets was a momentary uh, backwards movement of the sky ancestors. In the first section of this course, we briefly explored a little bit about Venus and its importance as the morning star or the evening star uh, and its scintillation. But in general, when planets are not near the horizon, uh, they show significantly less scintillation than the background stars. And that has been noted by uh, observations of Indigenous astronomers as well. We have previously heard about Venus's role as the morning and the evening star. It's also described as the laughing old man, Gandamala. Uh, now Venus and Mars are also very closely related uh, in these traditions um, of the Gumilare and the Uwalea peoples. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and in this one, sort of during the day, the eyes of Malian, the eagle orc, well, they represent the eyes of Boija, the Allfather. Mm. And then during the night, uh, Venus and Mars actually represent the eyes of Malian, which then in turn represent the eyes of Boija as well. Mm. Uh, these are represented through ceremony. Uh, so a blue-green opal from Uwalei country is brought to represent uh, Venus, and then a red opal from the area around Quilpie in Queensland is also representing Mars, which is then brought to a ceremony by the Arenti people of the mm. Central Desert. Yeah, wow. So Venus has obviously very important uh, ceremonial significance in the Uallare traditions. Um, as its appearance as the evening star is signified that the sacred fires uh, should be lit and that the fires must be relit each evening uh, until the morning star is seen and the ceremony can take place, at which point the sacred fire is then doused. Now, while this may be a bit confusing, you know, Venus being the morning star and the evening star, it obviously can't be both the morning and evening at the same time. Uh, and this is where we bring Mars back in. So again, Mars comes in uh, as the morning star while Venus is acting as the evening star. Uh, and again, we get these tying together of these two planets and they again uh, act as the eyes of Boja. So while Jupiter is quite a prominent object in the night sky, there are actually very few known traditions that talk about Jupiter and its motion across the sky. There is, however, an interesting story which explores the wandering motion of Jupiter, and that is the apparent retrograde motion, um, which is Jupiter appears to make this sort of backwards movement across the sky. And that illusion is actually caused by us here on Earth as we sort of overtake Jupiter in our joint orbit of the Sun. Yeah, so this tradition, it talks about the grasslands of the eastern uh, riverine corridor just to the west of the Great Dividing Range here in New South Wales. Now, many communities, many tribes in this area talk about this idea that Jupiter is this naughty boy. Um, Jupiter is the child of the sun, uh, you know, the star in the center of our solar system, and that the sun doesn't really like her child all too much. She's not a big fan of Jupiter. She has so much dislike for Jupiter um, that she sends men to spear him down uh, when Jupiter gets too low in the western sky. Now this again is tethering Jupiter to the earth and as Jupiter begins to struggle against this tether you see that retrograde motion of Jupiter. Now, in general, the fear of the people is that in the dry years, the grasses may not seed and that if the sun woman succeeds in injuring her son, that this is more likely to happen. And even greater fear is that if the boy were to be killed, that all people would become ill, uh, would develop blindness and many people would perish. 
Even Kakura, the boon man, could become blind. Such ideas tend to reflect their own experience with drought and with the effects of severe malnutrition. Yeah, so in uh, Gamilare and Ualei traditions, Jupiter is sometimes described as that red-eye fella. Now, is described, he is described as a bad spirit that is basically always watching you. He is often used to deter children from playing with fire, saying that kids don't play with fire, red eye fella uh, will follow you all winter, which is just terrifying. <laughs> As for the rest of the planets, the far outer planets such as Uranus and Neptune are just way too far out for us to be able to see with the naked eye. So there isn't any recordings of those that we know of so far. Yeah, the closest planet Mercury is so close to the sun that it's actually very difficult to see in most conditions. Now, there is potentially some reference to Mercury in Camilla Ray uh, traditions in which Mercury uh, probably is represented as a red kangaroo, uh, which then relates to ceremony. Yeah, so the story says that the kangaroo was a star low in the western sky just after sunset. And it was very important to the ceremony that the star was red. Mm -hmm. It was difficult to see and that it was only there some of the time, suggesting that Mercury was its likely identity. Now, the red colour of the planet is probably due to the reddening caused by Mercury being quite low uh, in the night sky, quite close to the horizon. But the identity of Mercury as the object in question is uh, basically inferred. It's not explicit at this stage. So Saturn is a really strange one because it is quite a prominent object in the night sky. It's quite easily seen, um, but there are still very few known recordings of it within traditional knowledge systems. Uh, but this field is obviously still a very young one and there's still a lot of work to be done in this area. And there may be many cases of Saturn and other astronomical observations within traditional knowledges that are yet to be retold.